So we talked about predictive analytics and maintenance side of things. There is a lot of applications. I'm sure most companies are using it in some form. So in the way we operate at Lemongrass, I can see a lot of applications. So we are, you know, the technology that is used, it's only inside our environment. And our guys know when things are, are failing with the capability that AI has provided them. And I've spoken to one of my clients who, who was saying, like, for example, uh, they have teams in multiple parts of the world, different languages and stuff. So if someone wants asks for a help, they can type in their native language and AI can do a translation in a different language and can be responded and, the, and it can be communicated. So what we are doing is making the response time for and the closure times of incidents smaller. So a lot of practical applications that we necessarily didn't think, think about is now possible with AI. And also it comes with other challenges on how do you actually manage it? At what point in time a human intervenes and questions the information that is provided? We as humans have an in, have the intuition and other abilities that which necessarily AI doesn't have. And how do we blend that human abilities, the inherent abilities that we, do, we have with the information that is being made available to us through different technologies like AI? So that's a very different path that we will possibly need to navigate. Yeah, I like the, the mentor-mentee kind of approach where if you have different people with different understandings, even different languages and cultures, like Gen AI is providing that that nuanced win there. And so that makes it a lot easier for a multi-global company. That makes it easier for uh, even like United States companies to work with other companies because they do not speak the same language, but hey, like we can actually translate that now, right? So... So on that, like, uh, Nanda, yeah. What the yeah, no, I wanted to add to what Judith is saying. It's a great point in terms of, you know, our human strings versus AI strings. And I think a great way to look at AI uh, is as a prediction engine. So it's predicting things, you know, whether it is a text, it's an audio, it's a video, it's the next frame, it's uh, predicting. And it can go on to predict various things, whether it's your DNA sequences. We just spoke about predictive analytics, right? It's predicting. It's basically about generating based on the past data. It's just like, it's, it, it, I should not suggest, but it is predicting next step, right? Whereas what humans are good at is judgment. So we can judge whether these things are right or wrong, right? So, okay, yeah, and that's why I said uh, it will give you a draft order and then the human decides whether to place that order based on what this one came up with, right? Similarly, email, you know, you just just now, you know, Doug, you mentioned about books, you know. Yeah, you have to take the, you can take the help of an AI, but don't copy paste it out there. <laughs> you got to make your judgment, make use of it, make it yours, and then present it. So I think it's very useful uh, way to look at it is in terms of AI as a prediction engine and human for judgment and use each other's strengths and don't just go by, okay, here is AI, and we tend to basically anthropomorphize uh, AI and make it more human-like. But I think the AI has its lot of limitations. It's mostly a prediction engine, and use it as that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I agree. I agree with all that, and and especially with the fact that it predicts. And, and it's going to be more and more served up as like an assistant or a co-pilot or someone that's working in collaborative with humans that is that is giving that those like not answers but it's giving those suggestions so it's a suggestion engine yeah. right so it's like hey i see this pattern i did this analytics this is what i'm seeing i, I suggest we look at this and the, and the human goes like no nah, i'm good no it's it um but in general so andy yeah so yeah, from yeah, your back, you. hey yeah. i'm sorry again sorry no no i i was just going to agree with doug yeah human should be there to override what it is saying at, at times you know yeah go ahead andy I was going to say, you know, if you think back to the origin, the origin of the ERP software, which is decades ago, <coughs> this same logic was the purpose of the ERP system was to take historical data and help the human make a decision regarding predictive maintenance or what the future is going to be. Uh, AI, I think, is just the next level towards all of that. And it eliminates even more of the variation of the human element, so that the, the that the that the that the, that the people that are last that are still involved are going to have the accurate information to make their own decisions. Yeah, and I think I want to add to that is that 
what has changed with ERP is that, you know, it's been a backend system. It's been giving, collecting all this data for all these years. Yeah. So what happens now, Andy, is that, yes, I mean, there was that promise. Now is the time when... We got no problem with collecting data. We got tons of that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so now is the time to get that data, collate that data, clean the data, and use it for, you know, all... Use it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and a lot of stuff with, with when you look to bring in Gen AI that, you know, companies ask like, hey, how is your data filtered? Um, how is it categorized? So all these things that we don't do, we all, we all need to start doing, right? And so ERP yeah. systems should be doing that as well as like, what does that data live? How does it live? Where does it go when it's in motion? And who has access to that, that data? So uh, th there's definitely a, a, a longer road a ahead, it seems. I think everybody kind of agrees, like we're just at the beginning still, and especially touching a lot of the platform plays that are out there, especially these large ones like ERP systems that that embody the, the whole world and how it's working uh, in the back end when it comes to like data and manipulation of, of like where, where those things are, things that are being purchased and whatnot. So yeah, so future wise, where do we think it's going? Like. If, if we if we get that right, say we get the information, say we're driving down and we're, and we're dialing it in and we're, we have these agents that are helping us to do the suggestions and, and giving us those suggestions. Like, what is that? What is like the good future or that that, that look like? What, are, what do we see? One of the users, what is that user like experience going to be like? Well, from from a uh, positive experience, you know, the more accurate the data, the more we can forecast and going back to Nandan's suggestion the more human can make the judgments uh you know the uh the ai is going to calculate the trends tell you what it expects is going to happen it's up for us to make the final decision yeah and i, I think one great opportunity is there for erp uh, i think erp like doug you mentioned about you know erp should take care of data and all those things i think there is a opportunity for erp to do that ensure that you know we we are building the right data but also the erp can be completely transformed you know right from dashboards you know i just the other day was looking at a crm dashboard how it can be so much different uh, with the generative ai it can be like you know tailored to andy or ronald uh, or judith you know and they are looking at a dashboard which is actually uh, very personalized to them and giving them the action items the next steps to take and then you're actually clicking a button and then it says, okay, yeah, your spindle for the predictive, the predictive analytics we made for the maintenance is ordered, just going back to the earlier example. But so I'm, I'm, I'm saying that there is a big opportunity for this whole AI to be embedded in the ERP and then it becomes so much more powerful uh, for in every organization that's, that has an ERP and, and, and make, can make use of that data better. Yeah, but before we go any further than Doc, I want to say something about that. That goes back to what you said about delving into something. So yeah. the same thing with Andy was saying, like we we were not you allowed to use calculators in school, and now everybody is using it and now blindly following information from the AI without any wisdom. That's the problem, right? So exactly. experience in that sense. So I think for for organizations who are, you know, going on that that transition um that they they need to keep in mind that the the core knowledge the core inf the, the core information that people need to have about their job and about the outcome of certain actions that they need to understand it that if they get advice see, that's a, that's probably the reason or that's one of the whole main reasons that ai is not allowed to give any advice to a patient in healthcare it's always going through a doctor right so we we need to have the human at the gate, uh, we need to have that human to take that information and say, okay, I, I have this insight, I have all this information, now I'm applying my knowledge and now it becomes wisdom, right? So now we can go one step further and now we can really truly execute that information. You know, I just wanted to add that before we go maybe to another. Question. Yeah, and I think I, that's what I said in terms of, you know, judgment versus prediction. So, yeah, AI is giving you suggestions and AI, uh, uh, people decide later, decide with, with people first. Yeah, yeah Judith, did you have something to add there? So, yeah. I'd like to add to that perspective, right? So, he, this AI gives an opportunity for humans to be humans. We are born with wisdom and we are there to use the knowledge that is around us. And AI is one more tool to provide that knowledge. It's just one more angle. Humans have the wisdom, the intuition, the ability to 
control things. End of the day, the gatekeeper, as Ron said, it has to be the human. And whatever field we are, let's specialize on it and let's direct the AI on where it needs to be as well. And this is bringing back to humans being humans and making the right decisions. I think humans in general want to trust other humans, right? I mean, you wouldn't want, again, I back to Andy's point of counting money, you wouldn't want an AI telling you how, or like giving you direction on your job to help you, assist you to count the money, to assist you to get things done or do more. Fantastic. Let's do it. To tell you when to clock in, when to clock out, when to go home, eh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Or when to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, so when we used to do RPA in the earlier days, um, we used to say that the, the, our job is to take the bot out of the human, uh, which right. means that, you know, and, and that, that's been the thing because a lot of our work is repetitive work. And one of the challenges, I think, for people is to get that bot out and then be more human. Like Judith said, we are born with that innate wisdom. Many times we have replaced that wisdom with a lot of repetitive work we are doing in our job. So we need to bring that humanness back. I think that's the challenge. Uh, next. Yeah, I think I think if, uh, on that point, right, and again, back to Andy's point where we used to teach people repetition and that was the way, like memorize yeah. these numbers, be good at that. And because we, we had right. to be, right? But the, the younger generations, they don't have to be. Um, they're actually more creative. They're thinking outside the box in most cases. And, and that's why and accomplishing more and right, yeah. exactly. And like we, but you know, some, some generations hate on the younger ones and vice versa, but we have like literally four generations working in the workforce right now. And so the younger ones, they get it. They're like, how do we automate this stuff? How do we drive this gen AI? Let's do it. I don't want to do anything. I want to like touch a button and go. And then the, the old generations like, but I've always done this. I'm really good at that. They've, it's almost like they forgot how to think creatively but yeah. they weren't allowed to right they just weren't allowed yes yeah and then exactly to my point i was saying it about the older generation in the sense that you know trying to be more being more human because yeah the younger generation do get it i mean i've seen all the younger generation are intuitively good at it 